Okay, welcome. This is Denise Wakeman, your guide and host for Adventures in Visibility. And I see right now that my picture isn't showing. So that's really interesting that all of a sudden you're not seeing me. Anyway, I'm here. You can hear me, hopefully. Uh, <laughs> On today's adventure, we're exploring how online entrepreneurs and authors get more visibility by selling more books. Now, you can get updates about uh, future Adventures in Visibility by joining our list at adventuresinvisibility.com. And also, if you'd like to tweet about the show today, just please use the hashtag Adventures in Visibility, and that way I'll see it and then I can give you credit and give you a shout out. So um, unfortunately, you know, I don't think you can see me. Nope, nope, I'm not seeing me. Penny, are you seeing me? I'm seeing you. Okay, because I'm not seeing me. I'm just seeing my picture. All right, well, I'll just assume that you're seeing me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There's always something, isn't there? You know, the other day I could I started a hangout and um, I got booted out and couldn't get back on till like one minute before we were starting. Anyway, okay, if you are an author or an online entrepreneur, I would hazard a guess that what you want to do is sell more books. And in order to do that, you need to be visible on Amazon. So today, my guest is Penny Sansevieri. She is the founder and CEO of Marketing Experts, and uh, she's also a best-selling author and internationally recognized book marketing and media relations expert. She's also an adjunct professor teaching self-publishing at NYU. Her company is one of the leaders in the publishing industry and has developed some of the most innovative social media and internet book marketing campaigns. She's also the author of 14 books. That just is astounding to me, <laughs> including <laughs> How to Sell Your Books by the Truckload on Amazon and Red Hot Internet Publicity. And today's conversation is going to be revolving around this whole idea of selling your book by the truckload on Amazon because this is the way that you get found and get more visibility. It's really a circle, I would bet, uh, that Penny's going to share that with us today. So, Penny, welcome to Adventures in Visibility. I'm so thrilled that you are with us today. Thank you so much for inviting me to be on the show. Well, you know, we've known each other for a long time. We've crossed paths in real life a couple of times, most recently at the Blog Pause uh, conference in Las Vegas, where I have to say I had a lot of fun hanging out with you. That was fun. And, that was um, fun. Yeah. <laughs> so that was one of the reasons that um, I wanted to connect with you today here and bring your message to my audience because so many people are writing books now. Uh, you know, me even many people who don't consider s themselves an author per se, they're a business owner, small business owner, solo business owner, and they're writing books to get more credibility and visibility for their business. Right. Right. So even though they are publishing you know, an ebook or something on Amazon, I consider them an author, but I like to make sure I'm more inclusive and, you know, for the people who don't you know, put that tag on themselves. So we wanted to talk about visibility, because that's the theme of this show, and how to sell more, because that's what gives you visibility. But first, I want to start with a quote that you shared with me and that I posted on the event page, and I'm going to read it so I don't get it wrong. Um, you said that if you shared the quote, it's from moz.com, the moz.com. If you're an author, that you're better off ranking on Amazon than on Google. So let's start there. Why is that true? Well, because ironically, Amazon is its own search engine. and a lot of, and if you start there, if you start from that point of, okay, so treat Amazon as a search engine, it really all starts to make sense because at the end of the day, for businesses in particular, right, your book is your business card, as is my book. And by having more exposure for that book, you're going to drive more interest to your business. So understanding the Amazon algorithms is, you know, obviously what we're going to talk about today, but it's a huge part of any author's. Um, visibility. Okay, I totally get that. I think that that, and I think a lot of people don't understand that when they uh -huh. publish a book, or uh -huh. whether self-publish or publishing publishing through a traditional um, 
uh, publisher because right. they just think that they put it up there and that's the end of it. And you're here to tell them that's not true, right? <laughs> well, and Amazon, and here's the funny thing. So I didn't, you know, I, I wasn't sort of born into this knowledge of Amazon the search engine. I was very curious one day and I thought, you know, I wonder how this Amazon thing works because I thought there has to be some, you know, these are not, these are not, you know, unintelligent people. There has to be some rhyme or reason to this. And then Amazon got rid of, I would say, most if not all of their paid for placements or at least things that the average author could afford. And that really got me thinking and, and digging more into the algorithm. So it was it was a lot of it was a lot of experimentation, which I actually keep doing, you know, I do all the time because you have to test things on Amazon. You don't get the kind of feedback that you do on Google on Amazon, so it's a little trickier, but it does work in much the same way. And I'm sure, like Google and like any other thing on the web, it's changing all the time. It's evolving all the time. Changes all the time. In fact, I think, you know, I emailed you what almost two weeks ago, and I said, "Oh, we got to let you know, let your group know because Amazon Amazon's changed." They're searching, you know, searching mechanisms yet again. So it, it's a little bit to keep up with. And again, they don't tell you. They don't send me an email and go, whoa, Penny, we changed stuff. <laughs> you know, you just, you sort of discover it. And that's why I try to stay always kind of with my head in Amazon to see what they're doing. And they don't change it daily. So it's not like they're, you know, they're, they think they have a little bit more to do than to change those things. But they do, they are always implementing new stuff, which is good. Yeah, well, and it evolves with technology as technology evolves. So, you know, as an author and online entrepreneur, you know, we have to stay on top of these things. And that's why, you know, I, for one, follow someone like you because you're paying attention and, you know, that's, that's what your expertise is. So, folks, if you haven't circled Penny yet and you're not following her on Facebook or anywhere else, Twitter, please do so because uh, if you have any interest in selling your books, you've got you to gotta be on top of it and Penny's your gal for that. Thank so, you. Um, let's go to um, the first uh, part of this and um, sure. we talked about that we were going to, or we mentioned that we are going to talk about, you know, how do you consistently boost sales of your book on Amazon and I know you have some um, strategies for that. Why don't you start there? Sure, absolutely. So the way that Amazon ranks, Amazon ranks using um, keywords and popularity of the book, right? And then also categories. And categories and keywords are probably, I don't know if one really outweighs the other, but I think both are equally important. So when somebody goes into Amazon and searches, and if you've ever done a search on Amazon, you'll see this, Amazon has an intuitive search. So in other words, if I pop in the term selling books, it's going to give me suggestions for selling books on Amazon, selling books, selling ebooks, yada yada. So it's going to start to give me suggestions just like it does on Google. Mm -hmm. um, and that's how people search because most of the time consumers aren't going into Amazon saying, I want a business book. They're more specific than that, right? So Amazon looks at all of those pieces and the problem is most authors overlook them because they think well the keywords are in the title and that may or may not be true depending on what people are searching on so when you have your keywords yes you can use it in your title if you're if you're searching this before your book is actually out you can use it in your subtitle even if you don't have a subtitle most nonfiction books do but if you don't have a subtitle you can certainly you know use that in the subtitle as you're loading this book onto Amazon. And I want to just for clarity's sake, for those who are listening who have a publisher who has, so they don't have their access to their Amazon account, you would take this information and you would sort of hand it to your publisher and say, hey, can you fix this? Because obviously the publisher wants, they want book sales. So in 99% of the cases, they're going to help you out. But if you have access to your Amazon account, it's pretty easy. You just go in there and make these changes and you're done. So the keyword piece of it, super important. Um, the, the categories, what categories you're in. Nine times out of ten, I find that authors really want to rank for big, broad categories. So I was teaching for national speakers last week. And just about everybody in the room, when I said, how many of you want to be the top business book on Amazon? Poof, hands popped up. Well, 
that's great. I would love to be the top social media book out there. But that's not really going to happen with people like Jay Bear and Guy Kawasaki writing all these amazing books. It's just not going to happen. But I can own a very narrow category. And so, again, that's something that Amazon looks at. And I know we're going to sort of delve into each of these pieces. Um, the other factor is the reviews. And I'll share, we'll share maybe a little bit later how you can get a lot of reviews and oftentimes using a free ebook promo uh, to do it, which we've just been testing for some other titles. Well, um, okay, so that's, keywords are a big deal. Are there other places besides the title and the category and the subtitle that yes. authors can use keywords? Yes, and I'm glad you asked that. So um, the keywords in the title, subtitle, book description, big, big important thing, book description. I recommend um, having the keywords in the header of the book description and in the body of the, um, you know, in, in the bullet points, the first paragraph most definitely because I, I don't, you know, again, Amazon's not telling me how their algorithms exactly work when it comes to the book description, but I do believe that it's very similar to Google in that they pay attention to the headline and they pay close attention to that first paragraph. So you want to make sure that your, that your keywords are there. The other place is the back end of the book. So back to, you know, the back end of Amazon where you loaded the book, there's a place for you to put your keywords and that's where they need to go as well. In fact, that may be the most important place to put your keywords. Now think about this way. I want you to think about keyword strings. So for example, when I put my book, How to Sell Books by the Truckload on Amazon into Amazon, I have keywords like how to sell more books on Amazon, selling books on Amazon, you know, so I have actual keyword strings. You can use up to seven of them. So, so that's a, that's, that is where you want them. Once you find what your keywords are, um, you can swap them out. So I'll play around with keywords sometimes, but I try not to do it too frequently. Not because Amazon doesn't like that, but because you have to, depending on the market you're in, you have to kind of give your kids a little bit of time to, to grow and to work within that, mar within that market. I've got a question about something that I used to see and don't recall seeing recently is tags. There used yeah. to be an option where you could tag books. You could tag it yourself, I think, and you could tag other books that you found so that you could find them easier. Do they still have the tagging option on Amazon? They do not have the tagging. However, they've recently launched um, themes, which will, yeah, which will we can certainly talk about in in a minute. But the themes are a little odd. I mean, I get that you know that they're sort of replaced. Tags went away, I think, maybe six months ago, and I knew they were going to replace it with something because it, you know you have when you have that many books on Amazon, you have to have some some way for people to some better way for people to find them but now they're using themes so okay. yeah so what's a theme well a theme I, I don't know what a theme is I mean it's, it's odd and I actually here's so here's the thing I discovered this um, because we do Amazon optimization campaigns for the authors that we work with and I was putting one together for somebody and all of a sudden poof I you know this whole this whole theme started to show up and I noticed that the categories had changed. And this does happen from time to time. Mm -hmm. So I started to dig in further. And what I found out, so I, when I called Amazon, I called, I, I literally, I'm not crazy, but I literally, I called them eight times because I believe that you're going to get, you want to make sure that you get consistent answers, right? Mm -hmm. And when they roll out something new like that, not everybody has that information. So I talked to this extremely helpful guy at Author Central, and he said, yeah, he goes, you know, we're launching these themes, and basically what it does is it helps to isolate the book by a particular um, thread in the book. And they're launching these first with fiction, and fiction's kind of funny because they have themes like uh, secret love and amnesia and that kind of stuff. <laughs> and, amnesia. So when, amnesia. I forgot what right? theme it is. Like, <laughs> right, like, oh, did you want to forget the person you were dating? Because I got a book for you on there. But um, so they have these themes, and what you have to do with these themes is you actually have to use them as a keyword at the back end of Amazon, mm. so that it helps you to come up in, you know, come up in searches. Um, and 
right now they've rolled it out in fiction and they're gradually rolling it out in nonfiction. So the business market, some of it you will see that and you see it when you look at the Amazon page and you're actually on a particular, in a particular genre, you'll mm -hmm. see it down the left hand side. You'll see themes oh. and it's pretty funny when you go to the romance ones because those are, you know, <laughs> Some of those themes are a little crazy. And I asked one of the guys, I said, I bet you guys had a lot of fun coming up with the themes. He goes, well, nobody asked me because I would have a lot of different themes. But I, thought, <laughs> I can only imagine what that could be, right? Right? I can only imagine what kind of themes you would come up with. So, and I asked him, I said, would you accept suggestions for themes? And he said, well, yeah, he goes, we would definitely would if you think that there's something, not that, believe me, they don't, nobody take, at Amazon takes my opinion at all, but just as a consumer, you know, would right. you take, so... If, as an author, you know, your theme has rolled out in your genre and you think, wow, I'd really like to have, I don't know, something, right, um, you know, author marketing or whatever within a theme, make that suggestion to Amazon and make it through either KDP, which you can reach them by email, or through Author Center, which you can reach them by phone. Amazon's oh, actually a lot a easier. Idea. Yeah, Amazon's a lot easier to get a hold of than most people think. Because over the years, all I've ever heard is nobody, I can never get a hold of anybody at Amazon. Actually, it's very, very easy to reach somebody there. Okay, good. Yeah. So how, how do you, um, what, what triggers sales of a, of, on Amazon? You know, that, that, you know, what can you do to trigger sales? I guess that's the, the key thing here. Well, let's start first with the category. Okay. okay. So when, when you get top of category within Amazon, regardless of the size of the category that you are in, it pings Amazon and somebody on the back end, you know, an algorithm, right, an algorithm mechanism starts to kind of pay attention. And the book becomes, um, the book starts to get a little bit of a push. So people say to me, well, what kind of a push? If you have a Kindle reader, when you get to the end of the book, there is a strip along the bottom of the book that says um, other recommended titles, right? Mm -hmm. That's the promised land, right? That's right. where you, right? That's really where you want to be. Those books wind up there via, you know, the traction that they're getting because Amazon's a store. At the end of the day, Amazon wants to sell books. So if your book is selling, they're going to give it a push so it sells even more, Right. But if right. your book is sort of languishing in obscurity and you're selling one book a month, Amazon's like, nah, well, you know, whatever. But if you're starting to push through some significant numbers and you're hitting top of category, now you you want to have a narrow category within two broad categories. So let me explain what that is. Again, let's take the business author. Okay, so when yeah. I was putting up how to sell books by the truckload. You know, I dug through all sorts of categories, and I thought, you know what, let me put this book into direct marketing. Now, direct marketing had only 41 titles at the time. Now, I've taught this session a few times, so um, there are, I think, now 175 titles in there in, in direct marketing, which is fine, right? I'm glad that you people are finding this category and they're putting their books in there. Right. But out of 41, I got, you know, I got the Amazon book consistently number one. So it started to show up. And also on the Amazon page itself, other people bought, the other people bought strip, you know, you really want to be there because those right. again are recommended titles that Amazon cycles through. So that's the first piece of it. Now, a narrow category within two broad categories. Okay. Um, the Amazon checklist, which I'm giving out and it's in the, um, it's in the, my, my um, signature on the, on the hangout has a lot of this information in it so it'll take you through the link and and how to find these categories because the categories aren't apparent on Amazon they're buried and here's the other thing too the categories that you get to pick when you load the book on Amazon are different than the categories that you're gonna find with this link I don't know why oh, that is Oh, okay yeah so you <laughs> do have to be so it's a little it's it is a little bit of I mean it's a challenge and of course you know you know me, love a challenge, right? Yeah. yeah. But, but so it's a little bit of a challenge, and so that so that the categories are very different. But it's surprising because when I was doing research for this session, I was looking through some of the business categories, and here's something that will blow you away: there must be what nine million books on work-life balance. No. In the, 
oh, there are so many books on work-life balance, it's insane. And and mind you, most of us don't have work-life balance, but that's a different discussion, right? <laughs> but, but on Amazon, in the work-life balance category, there are only 123 titles out of four million, billion, however many books that Amazon has on there's only 123 titles in the work-life balance. I was shocked. And part of it is, is because people don't know where to look. But if you're looking for a work-life balance book, you want to be in that category because at some level, if somebody pops in work-life balance in your, in the keywords on Amazon, your book is going to come up because right. you're in that category, right? So that's the first piece of it is the trigger with the category. The second is going to be the, the, the keywords. So how many times that you're coming up in keywords and at some point, if you're getting enough traction on your book, you're going to get the happy surprise where Amazon actually, you know, when you're popping in your search term into the Amazon search bar that it recommends your book, right? It pops up because sometimes I'll do that with some of the books that we're working with and it'll say, you know, it'll be, you know, one of the search terms in there. So Amazon will actually recommend it, but the keywords are the second piece of it. Okay. Because that's how people search. The third piece is the reviews. So, and you don't have to have reviews by the top Amazon reviewers, although they are wonderful and awesome and we love them. They're also very busy. So you want to get, you want to get, you know, you want to get reviews and you want to get reader reviews. And that's one of the things I talked about um, on, on your blog, The Future of Inc., was, you know, put a letter in the back of the book because that, you know, to encourage readers to review the book. And it does actually work. Yeah, um, yeah. It, it, works, it works really well. So those are really the three factors that Amazon, you know, that Amazon looks at. Okay. And I'll just say um, that the link for that article on, I think it's called How to Get Amazon Reviews by the Truckload, um, uh -huh. that link is on the event page that I posted it the other day so that people could take a look at that. Uh -huh. um, okay. So you talk about free being the best sales tool. How does that factor into all of this? Well, because I think people really want, um, they want to sample you as the author, right? They want to know that, they have a lot of choices. They want to know that um, what they're buying is really what they want because there are, anybody and everybody can publish a book and that's the good news. And the bad news is anybody and everybody can publish a book and most people do. So um, giving samples of your work or even giving away the entire book for free is a great way to build that fan base to get people because you want to get people to the point where they love your work so much they can't wait until you publish the next time right. or you and especially for business owners you get them into your funnel I have no problem giving away my books whatsoever um, in fact I've had authors who say you know I passed on your red hot internet publicity book to five of my friends and some people would say, well, those are five missed sales. Well, not really, because they're, you know, they're they're coming to their they're they're coming to the company and maybe they're, you know, we're working with them or whatever. Right. Um, so free is a great sales tool. Now we use the freebie days through KDP on Amazon. I highly recommend that. Um, and it's a great way also to build your super fans. But you've got to have a book that actually works for you. So here's the problem. People put people give away free that they don't put pieces in the book or components in the book that actually make the book, turn the book into a sales tool. And this works even for fiction, okay, just yeah. so you know. Um, so when we had, so we did a freebie not that long ago, and during the two free days, they gave, we gave away 61,000 copies of the book. Wow. Yeah. 61,000 copies? 60, yeah, 61,000 copies. That's amazing. Um, yeah, it, that's, a, that's a very, very big number. Now, I will tell you that if you think about this like a website, because when I say this number in public and people just sort of cringe, they're like, oh, 61,000 in sales, or you could have been a bestseller, and yada, yada. Well, that's actually not true because you're probably, I mean, while it's great to dream, you're probably not going to make that many sales in two days just average on a, on a book. Right. But what that tells me is that this book is converting very well. So the copy on the page is solid because people wanted it. Mm -hmm. There were enough reviews on Amazon. So it wasn't just a free book with no reviews and a terrible cover. Because let's face it, even though it's a digital product, 
I don't know about you, but I have so many books on my Kindle reader. I, I'm a little more picky about what I download now, and I think most people are too. Yeah. So you so when you get a number that high, you know that the conversion rate on the book is very, very good. But then there's the that letter in the back of the book that gets readers back to the author because that's what you want to do. Amazon does not release sales information, which is a big flaw with their system, but it is what it is. So, and putting a letter in the back of the book is not going to get everybody that bought the book to write you, but if you incentivize them properly, most of them will. So within two days of doing this giveaway, we got 200 letters from readers just from this book. From this, from this letter in the back of the book, right? Wow. Right. So big, big deal. Um, and from that, the book. So the book was number one overall, over on all Kindle lists for three days. Um, and from that, the book went from twenty reviews to now a hundred and eighty-three in about four weeks. So That's that influences how much visibility it's getting influences how much visibility it's getting, right? But then what you have to do with that free is you can't just do free, okay, I did free, I did the letter, now I'm good. No, no, no. When you get that, when you get this, these emails from readers, now you want to continue to engage them. So emailing them, offering them some special, offering them some exclusivity, some bonus for writing you. Mm -hmm. And as we're experimenting with this, we're finding that Readers really want to be, they want to know that they're important. And I've had readers tell me that the reason they don't review books is because they didn't think that their opinion really mattered. When in fact, it, it really does. So, and we assume that they know, and they really don't. So you have to tell them, you have to encourage them, tell them how important it is to get that review, that reviews don't just magically appear. But to go from 20 reviews to 100 and you know to over 180, that now this 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 book has now you start to build in some momentum for your book and it starts to you know and it's it's staying consistently out of you know four mil I mean we say there's four million titles on Amazon but there could be four billion titles because you can't track ebooks typically um, because a lot of people will just upload an ebook to Amazon without an ISBN number so those are those are not really counted. Um, but the book holds consistently anywhere between a 20,000 sales rank and a 40,000 sales rank in a very, very, very heavy, busy category. So it does, in fact, work because once you hit that momentum, that wave starts to kind of carry you through. Um, right. You know, and fans keep writing and things like that. And that we used free to actually do that. But and again, that just has to be managed properly. So, so my I imagine then that you know you used free for two days, right? Mm -hmm. So, but people continue to pay buy it after those two days. Right. Right. So, exactly. So they're really it. You are, you know, the visibility then increases the number of sales as you go. Now, maybe you're not going to sell sixty thousand in two days, but that visibility keeps boosting it higher and higher and you know it kind of maintains that um, you know that visibility of the book which creates more sales which creates more visibility etc mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely okay. yes that's absolutely true so it so it builds you know so at some point it just it builds on one builds on the other builds on the other but this but the pieces have to be managed they have to be managed and you have they have to be you know you have to do this in a very sort of thoughtful way. In other words, don't just throw some keywords up there and hope for the best. You want to manage it. So I encourage authors to track, you know, track your keywords, see where you're coming up in the searches. If you've researched the themes and if the themes have rolled out within your market, you know, track and research, you know, track and research those. Um, but at some point, Amazon does help you. They, they do, in fact, help you sell the book because it starts to you know starts to come up in recommendation right. and that's right. that's you know that's kind of a big deal. Okay, well I've got a question here um, from L Williams. I thought we'd bring in and just get some some sure. uh, feedback from you on that. She says the tips on how to choose categories are awesome. Here's my question: Does that influence your metadata? That is your metadata. Okay. So just to understand your metadata, as I'm referring referring to it now, now you're 
she may be referring to um, what the publisher refers to as metadata. So the, the book what description, the keywords, <laughs> that kind of thing. But what I'm referring to is I'm referring to whatever data that you have on Amazon, it's metadata. So um, keywords, book description, categories, all of that is part of the is part of that loop. Okay. Um, sorry, I'm I'm looking at um, <laughs> to see if there's other questions here for you because we are at the bottom of the or at the half hour mark, which is what I usually say is what this is. But you know, I don't think I've ever stopped at half an hour. So <laughs> if you have a couple more minutes, is that okay? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Okay. I have lots of time. Sure. Okay. So let me just bring up this other question. Um, oops. Got to remember, you know to. There we go. Alrighty. So Flora wants to know, speaking of ISBNs, do you favor assigning an ISBN to our Kindle books rather than just letting Amazon assign their own number? I don't really have a preference. I think that um, you can certainly have an ISBN number, but I, you know, a lot of my eBooks don't don't have an ISBN number um, on them. So. I and don't, why would you not put one on? You know, I. I, I know this is going to sound, I don't really want to be a publisher. <laughs> I know after 14 books, that sounds like a silly thing to say, but I don't want to buy ISBNs. I don't want to assign them. I don't, I just, I don't want to overcomplicate things. I'm, I'm big on simplifying. So I think that um, for me, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. And I never plan. So I would never, for example, how to sell books by the truckload on Amazon. That book will never be on barnesandnoble.com for obvious reasons. Right. right. That book will never probably be on Smashwords. Smashwords doesn't have necessarily, you know, their books are going on to Nook and not, and you know, and everything else. And so it's so for that book, it's it's fairly isolated. If you have a print book partner, then you should have probably have an ISBN number so that both books are linked to each other and so that they stay together on Amazon. Does that make sense? That does make sense. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. That. Um, what about if you is there a difference between um, between fiction and nonfiction for having an ISBN on an ebook? There is not a difference. No, I mean ISBNs are ISBNs. They don't they don't necessarily discriminate, or they're not necessarily different between it. You know, but you're going to find a lot of fiction books, especially a lot of um, contemporary romance, those fast read ebooks and whatever. They they don't have I, they don't have ISBN numbers. They just have Amazon numbers. So, and Denise, just you know, if we have time, um, I'm I'm happy to show a a little back end trick for finding categories. Um, Absolutely. If you want, to, if if we have the time, and if you think it'd be helpful to everybody. Yeah, go for it. Okay, so, so you're going to show your screen, right? I am going to show my screen. Yes. Okay. So let me just get let me just get to the right slide because we. Um, okay. All right, so I am going to okay. So, do you see the uh, do you see the light bulb? Yep. <laughs> All right. So, so that is the link to the main Amazon category site. Okay, and that will get you this. Right. Layers and layers, and you just want to kind of dig down and find as many categories as you can. However, when they rolled out themes, I also discovered a new way to search. And ironically, this is the really funny thing about Amazon. Ironically, these categories here and the categories that you will find by doing the search I'm going to tell you about don't always match. So you really want to do both of them. And let me just step you through this quickly. So Go to the search bar and just make sure that you've highlighted the Kindle store and you see that up at the top where it says search Kindle store and then the blank search area. And then you hit go. And what that will do is it'll drop you into the Kindle side of Amazon and it'll give you a whole new search area to find categories. And when I did that, this is um, so. This is where it. This is where it takes you to. It'll then it'll take. Then you can just search the you know the uh, ebooks and whatnot. And when I did that, oh, this is the themes by the way. This is where the themes show up. Oh, okay. 
But when I did that in particular, um, it, it, it showed me a whole series. That's where I found that work-life balance with 123 titles. So it showed a whole series of categories that did not exist using that other link. So I would suggest using both of them because I think that's, I think that's really important. So not to confuse anybody, but I just want to make sure. And okay. where you see the red arrow, the themes, and some of those themes, that you'll go down and look, look through them. They're kind of funny. But these are the, this is where the themes are going to be for the business and nonfiction titles. Okay, excellent. Okay. Excellent. Okay. So um, I, I have one more question here. Well, there's a bunch of questions, but we're not going to be able to get to all of them. But there's one that I'd like to um, throw up here because it's a good one. I was wondering, too, um, from Mary Waleski. Would you suggest an author use an older book for a KDP giveaway in order to spark interest in their newest book? Oh, that is a great question. So first off, Amazon does not discriminate via the age of the book. The only thing that you need to figure out is whether or not People are, you know, it, obviously it has evergreen content, so people are still going to be interested in it. But absolutely. In fact, um, what I would recommend that you do is use any of your older books, if you have them, to spark interest to the new one. Um, do a giveaway. Make sure that you put a letter in the back of the book to drive readers or give them a sample or give them a free way to get a free chapter of the new book or something like that, right? Oh, great uh, tip. Yeah, just make sure the book is working for you. And super easy to do, by the way. If you find somebody, and by the way, I have a I have a great ebook person who can just crack open your book, insert the letter, poof, you're done, and it's very inexpensive. So you can you can find me on, on Google Plus and I can certainly give you that information. But very easy to do, and I've done this for and sometimes I'll do promos for my books and I'll just change out the letter in the back of the book to do, you know, to to, to coincide with the promo. So yeah. Go back through your old content. In fact, for many authors, you may have print versions, but not the ebook version. Mm. And if you are sitting in older publishing contracts, I can almost guarantee you you have the digital rights to that book. So ebooks are a gold mine right now. And I would suggest push everything into ebook on the Amazon because it'll drive people drive people to your business, to your print book, you know, that kind of thing. Excellent. That's a, that's a really good point, and I like that you made sure made it clear that it's easy to update an ebook, and Very just easy. basically you just you update the file and re-upload it, right? That's it. That's right. it. You upload the file. Now, one of the fallacies people think that it takes the book offline off of Amazon. It doesn't. So you can make changes to that book, and it won't. You know, and, and I change I change keywords, I change whatever covers doesn't take the book offline. So that it just, that's it, it wait it up, updates it. So while it's updating, the older version still up, right? That's it, right? The older okay. version still up. So just make sure that the timing is right on those. Just make sure that you know you give it give it three or four days, give it a week, just to be on the safe side before you do the promo. But it won't take the book offline. Okay, perfect. So before I ask my final question, would you tell, tell us a little bit about the checklist that you are giving away? Yes. So the checklist takes you through um, you know, all the stuff, with the exception of the free conversation that we had, it takes you through all the stuff that we talked about today. It talks about keywords, um, how to find your keywords, the um, Amazon categories, um, the back end, so it's really just a list that you need to go down and say, okay, my book is done and it's ready to it's ready to go. And you know what's funny, Denise? When I did this session at Blog Pause, one of the gals actually she left it and she went and changed and updated her keywords and she wrote me that following week and she said, oh my gosh, the book's doing so well. So if you get the right keywords, sometimes even the first time you do this, it can spark it can it can spark sales on your book, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So really essentially a lot most of these things that you've talked about are really simple little tweaks that you can do if you have existing ebooks already uh, or, or you know you can plan it out for a new book that you're getting ready to launch. Yeah. And you should do this for all of the books that you have. Absolutely. And it doesn't mean if you've written in the same genre, you don't have to have new and innovative categories for every single one. Um, but you can certainly test out different, you know, different categories that you, you know, because sometimes you'll find, you know, like there are 40 titles in this niche category, there are 20 titles in this one, so, you know, you may have the books across a couple of them, but 
And the keywords, same thing. You can reuse them. As long as the books are the same, you can reuse them over and over. Okay, excellent. Okay, so for my final question, uh, because this is about adventures, invisibility, and Amazon is definitely an adventure, I, I would say. Uh, <laughs> sounds yeah. like it has been for you. Yeah. Um, would you please tell us what your most memorable adventure is, you know, whether it's business or life or whatever, whatever it is, travel, whatever, Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> I know, absolutely. I know, and, and you know, I'm always citing business stuff because I really love. I mean, I know it's really hard to tell. I really, really love what I do, but um, I will say that a few years ago, my mom grew up in Belgium during World War II, and a few years ago, I took her back to Normandy. Wow. And yeah, and that, and so we drove all through Normandy, and we went to the American Cemetery there. And I'll tell you something that was probably one of the best vacations that I think that, that I've had and certainly that she and I have had together. So that, and it was just, I'm so big into history. That's like, whoo, that's like my thing. So that is probably um, outside of the stuff that I just love and adore with my business. That was, that's probably one of the biggest and best adventures that I've had. That sounds very cool. I mean, definitely really uh, got some, you know, real life history there. And then, you know, being able to do it with your mom who, you know, lived through it probably was, yeah. yeah yeah so, so it was so it was, it was it was really awesome good good well you know penny i really want i want to thank you so much for sharing some of these visibility boosting tips with the audience today. Um, whether you're in uh, Hangout Land with us today or you're watching this later, thank you for spending your time with me and Penny today. We really appreciate it. And if you do have further questions about what Penny has talked about today, you know, post them on the event page with for us. And I think Penny will probably be kind enough to go in and answer yeah. your questions. Uh, and also, um, I hope that you see it, you you know come and join us again soon. Um, if you would like to get updates for the next uh, Adventures in Visibility, you can go to adventuresinvisibility.com and get join our list where we announce it first. Uh, or you can request to be added to my Adventures in Visibility opt-in circle here on Google+. Plus. So um, thank you so much for being with us here today. Thank you, Penny. I really appreciate um, your expertise, your fantastic articles on the future of ink, and uh, you know, spending your time with me today. Thank you so much for inviting me. And I will definitely check the page and answer questions. I appreciate this so much. Okay, thank you so much. And uh, everyone, please have an adventurous day. Take care.